This is a picture from space of Kuwait, an oil-rich Middle Eastern country. But these black spots are not pools of oil. They are, in fact, a massive landfill filled with used tires. This dump site contains over 49 million tires, making it the largest tire graveyard in the world, a title that has caused the wealthy oil nation plenty of embarrassment. The Al Salmi dump in the Al Jara district of Kuwait is believed to be the biggest tire dump in the world. So how did Kuwait, a country with a population of just 4.25 million, manage to acquire such a large number of tires in one place? And what can they do about it? Is it even possible to recycle all these tires? More than 2.7 billion tires are made each year across the globe, 70% of which are used on cars, while the remaining 30% are used on trucks and other large vehicles. Interestingly, 1 billion tires are discarded around the world, around 75% of which end up in landfills like this one in Kuwait. But these 49 million tires don't just appear overnight. The situation in Kuwait is a result of 17 years of neglect and tire dumping. An average new tire on the market today will last about 60,000 miles before reaching the end of its life. Tires that have reached this stage are usually recycled, but in Kuwait, these tires are dumped in the largest tire landfill in the world. Located about 30 kilometers south of Kuwait City, the capital of Kuwait, Kuwait's record-holding landfill covers an area of over 20 square kilometers. For many years, gigantic holes were dug out in the sandy area of Sulabia and filled with old tires, a problem that was further complicated when Kuwait began giving other countries access to dispose of their used tires in their huge landfill for a small fee. This led to a situation where the country had become a regional hub for used tires with no viable solution but to dump them in its massive tire graveyard. Tires dumped in landfills are usually located outside city walls to reduce the impact of their smell and pollution on nearby communities. These landfills are then lined with a special type of material that prevents the waste from seeping into the ground. However, even with these measures in place, landfills can still cause pollution and other problems. For instance, tires dumped away in landfills can take up to eight decades to break down. That's 80 years of space that could be used for other things like rehabilitation areas, green farms, and energy conservation areas. Due to their large volumes and 75% void space, tires kept in landfills are so inefficient because 75% of the space they take up is empty, meaning that if we keep throwing tires away in landfills, we'll soon run out of space. But space isn't the only problem we have to worry about. Old tires contain a lot of different metals like copper, zinc, and steel. Metals like cadmium and lead are also present but in smaller amounts. These metals can cause pollution when old tires are burned. For instance, if a landfill should catch fire, toxic gases like carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, and sulfur dioxide will be released into the air. These gases can cause respiratory problems such as asthma, bronchitis, and even cancer, both immediately and over time. The tires also release hazardous chemicals into the soil, which can contaminate groundwater and make it unsafe to drink. In addition to the environmental hazards, the tire graveyard has been subject to a multiple of fire hazards in recent years. In April 2012, some scrap metal workers deliberately started a fire at the tire graveyard while looking to recover scrap metal. In the end, 5 million tires went up in flames, causing a massive fire that could be seen from space. This fire was followed by another one in 2019 that took a long time to put out, causing large amounts of toxic chemicals to be released into the air. In 2021, another fire broke out in the same graveyard, releasing even more harmful pollutants into the air. The toxic fumes were so bad that residents in nearby towns were forced to evacuate their homes as firefighters risked their lives for several days trying to extinguish the smoke. Now that burning tires and throwing them in landfills have proved to be nothing but an environmental disaster, what about recycling them? Recycling tires might seem like a simple process, but the reality is anything but that. The reason for this is that every component that makes up a tire also makes it a seemingly indestructible product. To better understand this, you need to know the steps and materials involved in manufacturing tires. To make tires, it all begins with a process called mixing. 
In this stage, chemical compounds, synthetic rubber and natural rubber are combined together in a giant machine called the Banbury Mixer. This huge machine is heated between 160 and 170 degrees Celsius, causing the ingredients to melt into a smooth, sticky compound that can be molded into different shapes. The next stage is shaping. Here, the melted rubber compound is shaped into long strips and fed through rollers that compress it to remove any air pockets. Once this is complete, the long strips are then cut and shaped into desired shapes and sizes using specialized mills. After shaping is the final step, which is building the tires. This begins with building up layers of rubber around an inner liner to form something known as a green tire. This green tire is then placed inside a drum-shaped mold, where heat and pressure are applied for a process called vulcanization. This process binds the tire together, giving it its durability, resilience, and strength. Tires also contain carbon black, which gives them their black color, and zinc oxide, which helps with heat resistance. These combinations of different chemicals and materials, like sulfur and rubber, do not only make tires difficult to recycle, but very hard to break down naturally. And when disposed of in landfills, they release harmful toxins into the soil and water. This problem has raised a lot of concerns about the health and safety of local residents, especially in Kuwait, where residential areas are increasingly encroaching its landfill sites. But all hope is not lost as certain measures are currently being put in place by the government to contain this problem. For instance, the Kuwaiti government has decided to relocate the tires that were previously stored in Al Salabia to a new site near the Saudi border. The old tire site will also be transformed into a residential area with up to 25,000 homes, which will provide much-needed housing for the growing population of Kuwait. By relocating the tires, the government is addressing both the issue of tire disposal and the need for affordable housing in Kuwait. The high population density in the country has led to a shortage of housing, and the new project in Al Salabia will help address the issue. The government has also established five facilities to process, recycle, and export old tires. A plant operated by the EPSCO Global General Trading Recycling Company is playing a crucial role in this. The plant is said to be able to recycle about 3 million tires annually, transforming them from old, unwanted tires into consumer products. So how are old tires recycled? This first stage involves removing the steel wires that are embedded in the tires, which are typically used to reinforce the tire structure. Specialized machines are then used to cut and separate the steel wires from the rubber. This ensures that the rubber can be processed into new materials and that the steel wires can be recycled. The next stage of the tire recycling process involves shredding the tire casings into smaller pieces using powerful machinery. The shredded pieces remaining from this process are called crumb rubber or granules. This step is important as it increases the surface area of the rubber, making it easier to process further. For this final step, the crumb rubber passes through a process known as cleaning. This process helps to remove any contamination such as dirt, dust, or remaining steel particles. Once this is complete, the final product is then turned into consumer goods like rubber tiles. As for the tire situation in Sulabia, it's unclear if the country will fully get rid of its waste problem. However, with provocative measures and ongoing efforts by the government and stakeholders, there is hope for progress in addressing this issue. Bye for now.